you Jump, 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 jump What we done started Look at what we done started This the people party This is what we jump What's up, party people in a place to be? How y'all feeling today? My name is Talib Kwali, the BKMC, the MCEO. I got my co-host in the house, the world's best co-host, Jasmine Lee, in the place to be. Give it up for Jasmine Lee. How you feeling? You know, I feel like I'm about to headline an 80s concert or something. That's what I'm feeling. It's the shoulders. It's the, it's the shoulder pads for me. It's the shoulder pads, yes. And they're making your shoulders do strange things. I, I can't stop you, myself. You can't stop shimmying. I can't. <laughs> That's quite a shimmy. Well, hopefully we gonna play some rhythms and get you shimmying later. Yes. And because we are all about the talking drum today, we are taking it all the way back to the motherland because our guest today is a legend, a true master of his craft. He is a master drummer, specifically the djembe drum, an actor, the founder, artistic and musical director of The Lion and djembe West African drummers and dancers. He charmed everyone's hearts when he appeared on the PBS TV show Zoom back in the day. And then again, he returned to the show 50 years later for a return appearance. If you haven't heard him with Ben Harper and the Innocent Criminal, shout out to Ben Harper, you've definitely heard his work on songs with and stages with people like Dave Matthews Band, DMB, Jack Johnson, Mick Jagger, Quincy Jones, Santana, Macy Gray, Michael Jackson, Madonna, The Fugees, Stevie Wonder, Tom Morello. I mean, this this list is just like fantastic. Fire. And there's only like, that's not even half the people he's worked with. Together with Damien Marley and Nas, he worked on the absolutely masterful album, Distant Relatives. He's a student of great drummers like Babatunde Olatunji and Ibrahim Kamara, and he continues to tour the globe as a percussionist and a drummer. One of the people who is keeping that West African dance music tradition alive across the globe. For that, we owe him some gratitude. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for a living legend in the house, Leon Mobley in the place to be. Look at him, he's smiling, drool coming out. <laughs> that is a drum How circle hug. Right good, there. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> How you feeling, bro? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. It's it's such a pleasure. Yes. Wow, this is an honor. It's an honor for us to have you on a people's party. Oh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, you make us me. look good. Ah. <laughs> yes, indeed. We do it for each other. That's right. Yes, we in it together. Each other. Blessings, Welcome. my sister. Blessings to you. Welcome. Thank so, you, Jazzy. What was it like being from Roxbury, Fort Hill area? Because we mm. often talk about Harlem, but Roxbury can, you know, roll with the best of them. So how was it like growing up there? You know, Fort Hill area is an enriching area. It was mm. a place where we had woods that were right next to the house. Mm -hmm. And it was enriching because we had cultural centers nearby. We had artists who lived in the area. I grew up around the corner from Maurice Starr. Wow. Who started New Edition and That's New right. Kids in the Block. So I was, New Edition is my cousin, Ronnie DeVoe. Right, Roxbury legend. Yes. yes. So, you know, uh, my cousin Brooke Payne and I, we used to do performances as children and they grew up watching us perform, and it was a benefit that we were able to live in the same neighborhood as someone like Maurice Starr, mm -hmm. who would walk down the street playing his guitar, and I would be walking down the street playing my drums. So it was an enriching area. You know, we had a school that I taught at, Page Academy, mm. which was in Roxbury, was started out of a theater company, enriched by a preacher who was you know, one of the founders. He and his wife, they opened the school for their children and it became a place where black people had a sense of pride, mm -hmm. a place where we taught the culture along with education. That's right. Okay, you have to get your education, but we were based on the seven principles of the Nguzo Saba. The Nguzo Saba. Saba. Mm, yeah. Yes. Okay? Yeah. So this is this is how enriching this area was for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we lived on top of the city. We could see the whole city. And we have our night events there where we'd play music together and enrich each other. Yes, indeed. Keith Elam, guru, is mm -hmm. from that area as well. That's right. Yes. Yes. Well, my good friend, 
we grew up together in the Alma Lewis School of Fine Arts, mm -hmm. is the brother who is known as, I think, Suge, Big Suge. Big Suge, yeah. His name Boston legend. It's Carrie. It's Carrie. You know him as Carrie. Yeah, I know. Him we know Carrie. him as Big Sugar. <laughs> okay, that's that's my brother. We grew up together. You know? I was just watching this movie. There's this, there's this Sandra yes. Bullock movie. Yes. When the first scene where she raised this. The blind side. We, nah, it's, it's, it's a comedy. Uh, what is the Mr. name Geniality? of this movie? I don't know the name of the movie, but yeah. Suge is acting in it. He's acting because he's it. been doing. He was doing some background stuff. For, you know, he's known in the in the hip hop community, but um, he 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 tried his hand in the acting world and that was like the first thing I seen him in but yes. the movie takes place in Boston In Boston. so when I saw yes. that movie I was like okay this is realistic for me yes because Big Sugar would really be there yes <laughs> yes that's my brother we we grew up together doing plays together mm. at the Alma Lewis School of Fine Arts mm. this is where I studied with Baba Tunde Olatunji yes Max Roach yes and studied you know theater costuming uh, music. I studied with John, John Ross, and mm -hmm. many different musicians, and I was able to play with Duke Ellington mm. when I was. Yeah. So six your mother was old. friends with Elma Lewis, right? Yes, my um, mother worked at the school. Yeah. Yes. Tell us that Duke Ellington story. Okay. We were at the. Uh, it's called the uh, Elma Lewis Playhouse in the Park, mm -hmm. which was a theater that was in Franklin Park which is the main park of the city. And it was a stage set up there, and that's where she would have performers perform. Mm -hmm. And we were actually working, cleaning up the place, and I was had my drum, and I started playing. And Duke Ellington and them were playing that night, and he heard me playing. Mm. And he was like, who is this kid? You know, And I didn't know when he was looking at it, but they asked me to play that night in the show. So I ended up performing with Duke Ellington for the last th the three years that he came to town. Wow. He would always, you know, I rode with him in the car with, with, with my mother. She was like, I was like, Ma, who is this guy? He, she said, if he thinks you're good, you, you go with him. I was like, okay. That's an amazing beginning. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and speaking of your mother, I've heard you speak about, or I've read that your mother says that you came into the world drumming, that... She used to go, your parents used to frequent Lawson's Jazz Club on Newberry Street. That's right. Um, so what do you remember about those early, before the Duke Ellington situation, those early, early musical moments that inspired you? Well, I was named after her brother, hmm. Leon Johnson. Right. Olan Godet. Olan Godet. Olan Godet. Godet. Yes. Godet, okay. And he performed with Pearl Bailey mm -hmm. and Hello Dolly. He performed with Liza Minnelli, mm -hmm. toured the world with her. So I would always try and be like him, mm. <laughs> you know, perform. So I remember as a child taking pots, taking, uh, we, we had food from, we had to stand in line to get our food from the welfare. So it came in cans. So I had empty cans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I would play them upside down and play music with pencils. I used uh, silverware. Mm -hmm. um, and I would wake up in the morning and my brothers and sisters would be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just playing. Wow. I'm just playing, making. So my mom bought me a drum set when I was four years old. Wow. A Remo drum set. Mm. Okay. And later on... I end up having my signature series drum with Remo. With Remo. Right, full circle moment. <laughs> yeah, it was a full circle. That's beautiful. It, it was really great. So I, my brothers and sisters tore my drums up because I, <laughs> yeah. No, they kicked holes in them and tore them. I played them first thing in the morning, last yeah. thing at night, and all during the day. <laughs> yeah, man, that's the level of dedication to get to the where you at. Uh, um, did you see Amir's film, uh, Quest Love, Summer of Soul. Yes, this is the performance. Yes. Of, uh, I actually performed with the Alma Lewis School. Okay. Opening. At the at that event? Yes. When wow. It came, when it came to Boston. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like the, this film, um, yes. it just won the Oscar. Nice. Um, it was overshadowed by another moment. But, oh, yes. But, it, oh, but yes. Amir's moment was, yes. was very powerful. Yes. Amir Questlove Thompson, mm -hmm. what he's done for drumming in general you and know, how he's brought it into the mainstream. Oh, yes, indeed. We, we've, we've worked together. Mm -hmm. We toured together. Mm 
mm-hmm. Ben Harper and the Innocent Criminals. Yeah. We toured with the Roots. Yes. Ben has played with bass player from Led Zeppelin mm-hmm. with Amir on drums. Yes. This is my brother. This is family. Oh, this is family. Yeah. So yes. Amir, um, what I found interesting that I liked about the film was it really, what people don't, I think, missed about it, it was really from a drummer's perspective, okay. right? Because okay. the film starts, it starts with Stevie, ends with Nina Simone. Right. But it starts with Stevie doing what? Playing, Playing the, drums. the drums. And I've never seen, <laughs> I knew Stevie was multi-hyphen and I knew he could do anything. Yes. But I've never seen that. Yes. And in color too? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, we played African drums together, Okay, Stevie so I. yeah, so you because okay. you played with the brother, <laughs> yes. right? So I've never, I've never, as a fan of music, it's like, okay, Amir's letting you know yes. it starts with the drum. It starts with the drum. Then he's interviewing Sheila E. That's right. Right? And then right. it then there's a whole segment where he goes from Mongo Santa Maria right. to Ray right. Barreto. And there's and those yes. gentlemen yes. are talking about the drum. Yes, right. And how it connects people. That's right. right. So they're talking about the talking drum. They're talking right. about the Afri- West African tradition. So explain that for us. My understanding of, of, of this, mm-hmm. I studied and played with all those people on the list you just named. Mm-hmm. When I was 10 years old, I met Mongo Santa Maria walking across the street at 110th Street mm. in New York. Across 110th okay. Street. I'm serious. He's I living went, the song. Okay. <laughs> I was living the song. <laughs> and we became friends. Uh-huh. When he came and played at the Amalu School mm-hmm. of Fine Arts, Ray Barreto, my mother mm-hmm. used to go and see him play. And I would sneak in the club with her mm-hmm. and see him play. Mm-hmm. I mean, these people really affected me. Yeah. Baba Tunde Ola Tunji. Yeah. You know, my understanding is this. No matter where you come from, as long as you are human, you are a drum. That's mm. right. That's right. I don't care what color you are, what sex you are, how old or what young you are, you are a drum mm-hmm. because you are alive. And how what keeps you alive? Your heart drum. beat. That's mm. right. It's a rhythm. Your blood flows in a rhythm. You talk in a rhythm. You walk in a rhythm. You mm-hmm. are a drum. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you do. Right. I don't care what you do in life. Yeah. As long as you are alive and you are human, being a drum. Yes, indeed. When we had Warren G here. There you go. And he was talking about make and regulate. Mm-hmm. And we were asking about it. And he said, Jasmine asked him, why did you feel the need to tell us about how the G-Funk music was made. When he said, keys, chords, strings, we brings, melody. He said, because I walk in rhythm. And when you walk in rhythm, you have insight into life. Um, Speaking of Baba Tunde Olatunji, he helped me start my career. Mm. And a lot of people don't know this story, but my mother, Dr. Brenda Green, she works at Megar Evers College, and they do these events, National Black Writers Conference. And when I was 17 years old, uh, Baba Tunde Olatunji was the musical guest. There you go. And it was my mother's idea. She's like, you should. She's like, you do that little rap. You know, you that rap, <laughs> that rap stuff you be doing. You be doing that rap stuff. Like you should, you should rap. And my daughter works here at the show, Diani. So she knows. I'm talking about her grandmother, so she knows That's your how daughter? this woman. <laughs> <laughs> but she knows how her grandmother acts. You know what I'm saying? Like her grandmother be getting in trouble in the family chats because she be trying to get people to do creative stuff during the holidays. Like we should have all. <laughs> the kids up there uh, do a do showcase of talent. Everybody's like, why are you giving us homework? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But she, to her credit, she had me go up there uh, and I didn't understand his legacy. Mm. And I rapped my little raps over his drums. Mm. And then Black Spot was a journalist who worked at the Vibe magazine. And Vibe used to have their version of Unsigned Hype. Okay. And he saw me perform and he said, I like what you're doing. And he okay. wrote a wrote an article about me in the Vibe magazine. And that's the first time go. that me being a rapper has ever made press. There mm. you go. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes indeed. Right on. So, right on, right on. Tell me about the legacy of that brother and why he's so important and your connection with him. You know... I've learned so much more about him Mm -hmm. than even I knew when he was alive, Mm -hmm. okay? I didn't know he was Malcolm X's drummer. Mm -hmm. He was the drummer for, you know, political events and uprising events for us. Mm -hmm. I I didn't know that. I remember when I was a little kid, like 12 years old, I was in in New York doing a Broadway show. I was doing... I think it was Raisin. Raisin in the Sun. Yeah, musical version of Raisin in the Sun. I was understudying um, the brother who was Michael on Good Times. Uh, 
Oh. Ralph. Uh, R- yeah, Ralph. He was living in Brooklyn at the time. Yes, Because yes. he used to come into Ankiru Books at the time. Okay, look at that. Yeah. So, yes. And we used to sell them drums, too. Because <laughs> <laughs> he does African dance yeah. and drum stuff, yeah. too, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we in the same world, yeah, brother. Yes, so we connected already. <laughs> so, you know, Baba Tunji was always a magnet for me for me able to do other things outside of home, mm-hmm. you know, to go to New York and play and, and study in New York. And then he played with everyone from Carlos Santana, you know, John Coltrane, mm-hmm. you know, his line was long. You know, my, my uncle Roy Haynes, mm. trap drummer, yeah. you know, talked about it and yeah. told me all about him growing up, you know, so... Yeah. Uncle Roy always chased me off his drums. You know, he's like, no, man, don't try and be a musician. Don't be a musician, you know. But he let me know the importance of the African drum, mm-hmm. the language of the music and how it affects the music of today. You know, there are basically two rhythms, six, eight, and four, four. Mm-hmm. That's really three, four, you know, like waltz is, you know, and three, four. So it's like this music it affects the world. So Baba Olotunji was affecting the world. Mm. His music was affecting the world. So I was like, okay, I want to touch the world. Mm. You know, I, I, I remember when I was like nine or ten years old in, in New York, mm-hmm. and I was with my uncle, Olan, mm-hmm. Leon, uh-huh. and he was rehearsing, doing some show, and we were in the Ed Sullivan Theater. Wow. And I found my way to the marquee with my drummer. I was playing on top of the drum doing all the wow. Tunji's work. Oh, you wow. know, playing for the people as they walked down the street. Yeah. You know, I got in trouble, but, you know, <laughs> it was that kind of inspiration of life that people I saw would hear and love his music. Yes, indeed. You know? Yes, indeed. Um, are you a fan of Jay Dilla? Jay Dilla. Jay Dilla, a uh, hip-hop producer from Detroit. It's, uh, okay. So no. Slum Village. Slum Village. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Steve, if you can remember, I want to get him a copy of Dilla Time. Yes. Please. Because Jay Dilla, um, for hip hop music, I personally feel he is our James Brown, Bob Marley, Wow, Nina Simone, you Jay know, Stevie, Dilla. all wrapped in one. Okay. He, the way okay. Jay Dilla made hip hop beats changed. All like changed the game, and it's like he's a direct influence on the roots. The way Questlove plays drums is yes. based on Jay Dilla. Okay, Daru Jones, who now plays for White Stripes. Yes, his entire drum yeah. style was based on learning Jay Dilla beats. Trust me, Daru, you, we met. You know Daru, and oh, he's like, you know, we got to play together. Yeah, we played together, and it's just been Daru the truth. <sighs> But he learned yeah. off of them Dilla beats. You know really? what I'm saying? Like, he was producing with Q-Tip back in the day to yeah, the Umma. Yeah. I say that because there's a book that just came out. When you were just talking about the two different ways to do it, mm-hmm. there was a book, there's a book came out called Dilla Time. I haven't read it, but I do sell it on my website, Inkiru okay. Books, okay. Um, yeah. where the author is saying that the way in which Dilla program his drums, the way he did his drums, is in between those two different ways. Which so I think you'd be interested in reading. About I'd this. love to see that. Yeah, I would love to. He, I probably even heard his work already and didn't even know. No, you definitely have heard his work. <laughs> Absolutely, like yes. you, the type of music you do, you've definitely been around and heard his work. Yes, but I'd like to get you more familiar with with Dylan. Please, and, and I would love to look. It look would be beautiful. Yes. Um, shout out to uh, to Elijah Green. You called him yes. a different name. Talu. Tam- Talu. Yes, Talu. Right. He is the djembe drummer in the Fela musical. That's right. Which is one of the best musicals I've ever seen. And yes. uh, my son, Amani Fela, is named after Fela. Fela. There you, go. you know, the, the whole Fela, Tony Allen, the Afrobeat thing is a huge part of my life. Do you get to play a lot of Afrobeat music? Well, you know, I actually spend time with Fela. Okay, well, tell me about that. Babatunde Olutunji's son mm-hmm. was managing Fela. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, so I was able to spend time. With Fela, to okay. Kwame. Okay. Kwame Olutunji. Yeah, okay. Right. So I love that music. I have put that Afrobeat into basically everything I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's so, and that I love this it. Afrobeat as a musical um style, there's a right now like Wiz Kid yes. and 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 those type of artists, 
they're doing the music. They're calling it Afrobeat. Mm -hmm. It sounds sonically different the than what Fela and them were doing. Mm. Said. They have also techno Afrobeats too, because I went to this party the other day and it was Afrobeats, but it sounded like you were in like a... I suppose yes. that's the evolution yes. of where it's, yes. where it's going. But I suppose yes. it's all from the same seed. I mean, it's like, okay, we do a rhythm called Manjani. Mm -hmm. It's usually like maybe... 200 BPMs, mm -hmm. maybe wow. maybe 300 BPMs That's a lot. even, you know, which is really that's pretty fast, pretty fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's able to touch this music that is now being mm -hmm. used. The uh, BDM, what is it called? E e EDM. 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 Yeah. Right. This music, where I've heard djembe parts parts lined up with. I'm like, oh, that's no problem. That's like, oh, we do that. Yeah, I was doing that. 30 years ago, you right. know, it's like, okay. But I understand the relation of the music, how it does 360. Mm. You see, drum is always, no matter where you come from, you are a drum. And in every music, there is a drum. And yeah. the drum mm. language will be able to be played because it is African. Yeah. Mm. Unless you're Griselda, <laughs> West Side Gun, <laughs> Ramen, I'm just playing. Because no, that music, a lot of that music, a lot of that type of hip hop, so there's a type of hip hop that's popular now that uh, is not a sample based, but not drum based. Mm. And they're not putting drums in mm -hmm. it. And it's giving more space to hear the, the rapper, but then the rapper becomes the drum. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then the yes. vocal becomes the percussion. Yes. And it's still, they're still like this. You know what I'm saying? Still and, keeping time. And that's coming out of what? You said Brazil? Gris Griselda is the name Gris of the label. Mm -hmm. And there's a okay, lot of Griselda. a lot of rappers on that label. But they, they're ushering in a style. Shout out to Planet Asia, because I feel like Planet Asia did an album back Second in the day. Second shout out today. Second shout out today. Planet <laughs> Asia was kind of doing this style of like rapping without the drums. And he did it right. with Alchemist. And he did it uh. with, with Apollo Brown. And now, and Mad Lib does that Mad type Lib, of thing. Yes, I, I've heard Mad yeah. Lib do some things of that Mad Lib plays drums, but he'll also make beats that don't have a traditional sample drum in them. Mm -hmm. It's really about the loop. The loop. And the sample. Yes, and yes, and, and yes. that gives more space for the, for nice. the vocals. So it sounds like you kind of went to the same school as I did because I went to elementary and middle school in Roosevelt, New York. And we did have West African drummers and like they would come and teach us African dance, or whatever. That was the only time we could really like, you know, shake it because it's, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 um, you said you were going to show us some of that earlier. Before I did we started. not say, but you know, yeah, you said, oh, I just dropped my Red Bull. See, you I said you was going to show us how to West African dance and wedges. I, yeah, I did. Why are you trying to get me to fall? I'm not doing it. I'm going to fall. But I, I, we did we did do it, and my mom is going to really curse me out for not doing it right now because she actually loved African dance. That was her favorite thing. But anyway. What dance do you want to do? I was, in, I was not doing any dance. I haven't done African dance since I was like 10 or 12 or something like that. So you were doing funga? I don't remember the style that it was. I will have to ask. You know any names of any of the dances? I don't remember. I really don't. Any songs? Well, they were to the drums. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing the uh, the dance today because I just do not want to get cursed out further than my even mom. If play, even if we play, even if we have, you know, there I can, you, you know, I can. Yes. because like, you okay. brought your drum with you. Yes, I did. I and did. Bring oh my, my drum. God, Talib, are you gonna have me do? Okay. And, and, and you have this album, the Djembe album, <sighs> okay. right? Lamba is a very oh, popular like song off okay. this album. Okay. Because these drums songs have names. Yes, they do. But who? I, I don't know. I never know the names of songs anyway. I'm you ready? no, you know. Come on. Oh, okay. Now, now I'm doing African dance. Come on. <laughs> I played a lot before you. Yeah, I want to hear that oh, live. stuff earlier. All right, now I have a, a rap on here. I have a failed West African dance, but you guys don't want me to do British, so we won't do that. So you had a question, yes. 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 You yes. were in The Raisin in the Sun on oh, Broadway. Yes. yes. So what do you remember from that production and the energy from it? And do you feel like it was a, a sort of a coming out party with a black-led production? 
I'm out of breath if you can't tell, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this being involved in this production as uh, one of the first times that I actually spent time away from home, mm-hmm. you know, because I was living in Roxbury. Uh, I went from the Alma Lewis School. We went, I took a trip to New York, mm-hmm. and I passed the audition. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I ended up staying in New York, and I was working with Fred Benjamin, who was a dancer, who had his own dance company. Okay. And I was doing that while I was living with my uncle, who was dancing with Fred as well. Okay. So I was able to work with Jeffrey Holder at that time. Wow. You know, it was a real, like I said, inspiring, enriching moment for me. And to be in such a production, you know, I really wanted to be more in the show, which I didn't really get a chance to perform a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, I had understudy. Okay. So I just had to, you know, yeah. do it. And Norman Lear was actually Norman Lear. involved. and It was a great time. For me to be doing what I was doing and, you know, a young child, I was actually offered the role of uh, Michael on Good Times. Oh, okay. Yeah, but mom Ralph. was like, yeah. Is his last name Carter? Yes, it is. Ralph Carter. That's it, Ralph Carter. Yeah, shout yes. out to Ralph Carter. Yes. yes. Oh, wow. Um, okay, so can you take us into your days of busing in Boston? Okay. Um, I know the program was very controversial, but do you have good things to say about it, and you are still in touch with your host family? Well, yes. I was uh, one of the first students involved in the METCO program, which is a busing program that uh, is now being recognized through the city of Boston, and the lady is being uh, awarded and has some things that are going on for her. Uh, in terms of what she's been doing, which we were, I was the only black child in my grade level from the third grade until the seventh grade. Wow. So I had to learn a different style of living because mm-hmm. it was totally different. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I would spend time living next door to the governor, Francis Sargent, and being chased off of his land. Because I was playing with my host brother at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so there was a real tight issue of racism. A culture shock as well. Yes. So when I was coming back to Boston and spend time, we would have meetings at the Amalua School where, Mm -hmm. because the Mecco students had the chance of spending a lot of time with white people, we would come and share with. The other people who were just getting forced into it and busting in Boston, how, you know, things were the same, mm. really. They really were. Mm. I mean, we're different, right. no doubt. Different. We are different. Mm. But we're the same. Yeah. You know, just, people, I used to do 400 school shows, you know, just like lecture demonstrations in schools. You know, it was lecture demonstrations on traditional West African drumming and dancing that we mm-hmm. would do. A lot of the students would ask about, what food do they eat in Africa? And I'd be like, chicken, rice, and right. fish, and cow. It's just you know, prepared be- differently. Right. It was di- there's no difference. Right. You know what I mean? No, you're right. So there, there's a difference in the style and the way that they make it with the seasonings the and different seasons, things yeah. that are happening. But it's the same food. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so I am right. you and you are me. Taco and we ain't are nothing we. but a sandwich. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you had a pretty interesting childhood, though, because also you were in one of my favorite shows and also one of my mom's favorite shows on PBS. Come on and zoom, come on and zoom, come on and zoom. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. How was that? Uh, zoom. <laughs> 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 What well, was that? I really loved Zoom. <laughs> that, that that was 50 years ago. Okay? Wow, that's a whole lifetime. Yes, that's a whole lifetime. Mm-hmm. 50 years ago, we premiered the show Zoom. So it was a chance for me to have an opportunity to be in the light of many. And it is a blessing that I truly, truly... I let it go at one point. Mm. Okay, I was like, I'm not even telling people I'm from Zoom. Right. And then we were playing at the China Club. I was playing with this band, and it was uh, Don Henley. Mm. It was um, Mickey Dolenz from okay. the, Monkees mm-hmm. the Monkeys, and Verdine White, the bass player from Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. 
So we're playing a song. We stopped the song. And all of a sudden I heard, come on in Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> we're like, no. They were like, I'm Leon. I'm like, oh, no. Are you serious? That is hilarious. Okay, well, we were in the club. I mean, it was unbelievable who was there. And they're talking about me being on Zoom. Yeah. I was like, no. Come on, no, 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 no. Don Cornelius is in the house, okay? Wow. And, I mean, you, you, you're talking about singing Zoom to me with Don Cornelius here? You guys, have you seen a song? <laughs> the things that you grow up with stick with you. And then with the zip code, oh, two, one, three, four, send it to Zoom. Yes, I want to be on that show. You know, That's a real zip code? Is yeah. that, it's a Boston it's zip Boston, code. Boston, Roxbury. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. There have been many people who I've met uh-huh. In the arts and con- entertainment world, okay, this last week, I was at the rehearsal spot rehearsing with Ben Harper and Billy Bob Thornton mm. was next door. And we came outside and we were at the table and he was sitting there going, ah, ah, can we take a picture together? <laughs> I'm like, are you seriously talking to me? You want to take a picture like with Sling me? Like Sling want to picture with me? Dude, I'm like, are you serious? He's like, man, I grew up watching you on TV. That is awesome. I, I, I make Greekers. I play drums because of you. I'm like, oh, my God. Come on. Wow. You know, Forrest Whitaker told me the reason he's acting because he wanted to be me. Whoa. I'm like, huh? What? It's my handsome doppelganger, Forrest. <laughs> I mean, are you serious? I mean, it's like. the voice for me. <laughs> We did a show with Pearl Jam and the lead singer, Eddie Vedder's like, oh my God, Leon Moby, comes down and kiss my feet. I'm like, dude, Whoa. come on, man. You Yeah, but Eddie Vedder got to know you outside of Zoom. He probably know you from... He knew me from Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> he knew me from Zoom. <laughs> Never mind that, you know, I've been doing what I've yeah. been doing with Dave Matthews uh-huh. and all the guys, you know, I've been performing with Mick Jagger. Right. You know what I mean? But even Mick Jagger was like, <laughs> You're Leon from Zoom. That like is it. hilarious. It's such a good yeah. show, though. That's a beautiful thing to have. I, I mean, it's it's such a it's such mm-hmm. an honor. I mean, really. I remember doing stuff with Run DMC. Run DMC. Mm-hmm. We were talking about Zoom on where the seventies. Where you know, I was like, right. my God, you guys remember this stuff? Yeah, you know, representation matters as well. It does. Yeah. Mm. So to see a young black person in mm. that position is important as well. That's I think that's part of it. Mm. Yeah. You know, I remember my picture would appear in Jet, you know, as being black on TV for that week. You know, that was such a... Uh, hey, man, uh, I know. Thought Look, for me, I was like, wow, really? One of, the, one of my monikers I call myself is Ebony Man. Yes, I Right, because yes, you know how important that Ebony Man magazine was. Mm-hmm. That whole Ebony mm-hmm. Jet, like that's right. you had Jet and you had Ebony, Ebony. Man. Yes. So that's why I'd be like, I'm Ebony Man. Ebony, Ebony Man. Ebony, right? Yes. I get that from Mike Epps. Yeah. I was like, you don't know who you fucking with this? I'm Ebony Man. Bye. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, man. I used to, uh, so I came up, I'm not a drummer at all. Okay. But I came up banging on the table. Yes, sir. You know, and, and Mike, Mike Rappaport's documentary okay. about Tribe Called Quest. Okay. Uh, he talks about he has Q-tip at Murray Bertram High School talking about he used to bang on the table, all that you yeah. know, and and so that was very important to me. Yes. And um, I went to high school with a djembe drummer, not high school, uh, junior high school named Dell. Um, and so when I first, like, I always wanted to incorporate that when I finally got to record mm. my album on on the album Reflection Eternal, a song called Africa Dream. And my dream for this song was. I want to have all the black music in one song. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to start with the drumming, the djembe drumming, mm-hmm. and I wanted to end with like cuts and scratches yes, and saxophone and yes, bring sir. it all in at the yes, end, and which I did mm. on that song. Um, uh, Weldon Irvine is playing keys mm, on that song. Okay. And it's crazy because I was just thinking about him when I watched that Summer of Soul. Yes. Nina Simone talks about him because he wrote right. Young Gifted and Black. Young Gifted and Black, that's right. But, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing free association right now in my brain. When well, I'm thinking about all the times where that, where the drumming in particular was important to my career. It's not that it's over. Oh, yeah. We have time. Yeah. We it, can do that. It's just now starting. make it still yeah. a part of your career. Yes. I mean, it's an honor because I've grown up listening to so much different kind of music. Mm-hmm. And you have made a scene, a 
a personal note on the cultural scene. First of all, even your name. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It just... So... Thank you. I have to thank my parents. You know, for yeah. me, understanding that as I am... Yes. ...who I am, I have that high, high respect for you, who you oh, are. Oh, thank you, brother. And what you do. I was very gifted to work with Nas, mm. who... I, I didn't... When I was working with him, I didn't know of Nas. Right. And this is like... You were brought in from Damian Marley's side. Yes. Yeah. And this was years after Nas is done when he's done. Yeah, he's already an icon at this okay. point. Okay. Yes. So for me to be able to have that presence with him, because for me, I've I've worked with the last poets. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where yes. I'm coming from. This understanding of this type of music and doing this type of situation, where I know this has been something of your parents feeding to you of that. Yes. Because it's me too. Yes. You know what I mean? We, you know, and for us to be able to have that same kind of consciousness, but you don't know how. I, 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 I really. I love it. That. I love it. Do you know what I mean? That's, yes. why, that's why I brought my drum today. I knew we were yeah. doing an interview, but I was like, I, I haven't even talked to you about it or even asked you about it. But well, we need to do it. I would love to do it. I know we it. talked off camera about doing some stuff with Ben Harper, Yes, but we need to do stuff. And, and, and you know, we just had Cypress Hill in here and early in their career, they, they added a, a drummer, like a, he's playing, he's not playing djembe drum, is he? He uh, uses Eric, my, Eric, my He used your drum, band. okay, yeah, he's using. My signature series Yeah, that shout I out to Bobo, Rebo. Eric Bobo. That's and right, it's like it's, Bobo. It's all this synergy um, happening. When you, I saw the symbols on your drum. Yes, and sir. And they're in symbols. Yes, and I saw sir. the one that you said is Sankofa. That's right. And, uh, the, you know, the Sankofa, I learned about that watching that movie, Sankofa, there Haile Jirima yes. movie. Fantastic which is, movie. and it's starring Muda Baruka. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And, and what he does with the, with his poetry is like drumming. Let me tell you what he's done. Mm-hmm. He's taken my CDs and uses it on his radio program. Right. That's his opening uh-huh. that he uses. That's your that's your stuff. It's my music. That radio yeah. program has been on for how many years? Yes, now? man. It's been a minute. If you go to Jamaica, <laughs> you tune in to Muda Baruka's radio show. It's yeah. a it's a tradition. And he uses my music at his mm. as his opening for yeah, years. Yeah, and the movie Sankofa and the, the concept of Sankofa is about that spirit and going back to the past and 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 utilizing that in that's the now. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what we're talking about. That's right. Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, you as an artist and what you do mm-hmm. and who you are inside the industry really makes that a strong, strong presence and something that is really conscious of us Mm -hmm. and something that we really, really can really grow from. I have no choice, brother. You know what I mean? I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Bro, I'll support you in any kind of way I can. Thank you. You know what I mean? Now, speaking of standing on the shoulders of giants, tell us about Ibrahim Kamara. Oh, wow. Because I'm not wow. really familiar with this with this person. I yes. feel like I need to be. Okay. And his and his Senegalese connection. Well, let me tell you, I met this brother when he defected from the National Ballet of Senegal. Okay. Mm. He joined he our defected. dance company. Okay. Yes. He he broke away. He and Jean Marie mm. broke away from the National Ballet of Senegal. And worked with our dance company, The Art of Black Dance of Music, mm-hmm. in Roxbury, Massachusetts. Now, he is such a he he had such a a mindset that was so wide. He started yeah. doing music, incorporating Senegalese music within inside of American music. Okay. So this is where I've gotten my tent of this mixture. Okay. And he ended up working with Stevie Wonder okay. on The Secret Life of Plants. Ah, okay. He does the African music on that scene okay. there. So he then moved here to my Los Angeles, and I was 12 years old at the time. So, wow. Yeah, I've been following him, and wow. he was such a, a strong force for many people. We used to do the celebrations in New York, uh, at Brooklyn Academy of Music. Uh, That's my home. <laughs> That's my home. I spent so many weekends that my mother took me there every weekend. Okay, well, yeah, dance we, we, we would hit we would we would hit the library yes, and then sir. we would hit the museum yes, every sir. weekend and dance Africa. Yes, when sir. I was working at Inkiru Books, I used to set up my stand 
<laughs> and sell book and from day one for Dance Africa <laughs> African Street Festival. That's right. That season, I'd be out there selling them books. Right. Dance, Dance Africa was amazing. He was he was one of the the founders of Dance Africa. Wow. He was a such an important person. part of that Bogolan yes. era of Brooklyn. Yes. I mean, it was such a unifying force that I mean, we would have people from all places come together and we would work together in that festival. Man, it was fantastic, bro. Let's talk about festivals a little bit because that was a very important part of my life, mm -hmm. going to Dance Africa and mm -hmm. going to Africa Street Festivals. I started going to look at the women because mm -hmm. I started when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. My first like, oh, you know, there's going to be some girls at mm -hmm. Dance Africa. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then you get some knowledge of self and you become more, more cultural. Um, the importance of, like I was in Venice the other day Day. Not the other day, a Venice few months beach? ago. Yeah, jogging along the beach, and I came upon a drum circle. Okay, mm. I didn't know they did it. a drum circle in, in Venice, mm -hmm. and it made me think of the drum circle that I used to go every Sunday in Prospect Park, and it just made me think about just in in gatherings where there's enough people, there's always a drum circle. Mm -hmm. You just got to be able to find it. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the importance of festivals and drum circles in terms of the type of drummer you do. You know, drum festivals for, for some people really are a chance where they are able to express themselves. Mm. Now, drumming is a language. You take the spoken language of a people and you emulate it through the sounds of the drum. And that's how you communicate from distances to distances because the drums are very, very loud. So when you have the drummers who are saying the same thing, it can go for a far distance. We're talking a whole different type of language. It's a total different language. At a drum circle, when you come to somewhere like in a city, you're having people who are just expressing themselves, mm -hmm. which is a great chance for the freedom, you know what I mean? Because sometimes, a lot of times, when people get into the the, the structuredness of it, then it's, it's not afraid. Yeah, it's not. You have to play this part here for forty five minutes. You know, it's like, man, I want to play something else. But at a drum circle, you have a chance to just express yourself. There's so, no rules. So yeah, you don't you don't find the. I guess the professionals there. Yeah. There are professional drum circles. And even in some of those, it becomes, hey, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you doing? Yeah. So sometimes for me, I always just, I'm playing with a smile. <laughs> I'm always going to play with a smile. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to say that it goes this way or it goes that way. Mm -hmm. Let's be open. Let's share. This is interesting. You know? Drum circle etiquette. I've never yeah, had to think about yes. that. Yes, because sometimes you will step on people's toes mm -hmm. and you get people upset. And I'm not here to do that. Let's just have a good time. You There's always I mean? sage burning in a drum circle. You Come know, on. a smile always saves you. Come on. Yeah, just think smile and people's hearts just soften. You have one of the best smiles I've ever seen. Thank you, Zatalib. And your smile is a huge <laughs> part of this show. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. yes. I, mean, um, I just... I wasn't finished with my speech. But okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you were in were in the um, movie Poetic Justice. Oh yes, right. With oh, uh, yeah. doing a West African djembe, West African drummers and dancers. Yes. Um, this scene was very important to me because, like I said, I come from that. Mm -hmm. So I okay, me not understanding California as a teenager when Poetic Justice came out. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace to John Singleton. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace to Tupac mm -hmm. Shakur. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Joe Torrey, who's brushing his That's hair right. for the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My sister Janet Jackson. Right. Um, I didn't understand California. Yeah. I didn't understand the terrain and the diversity between LA and Oakland. And they're taking that drive. Mm -hmm. And so they veer off into this african festival and this you know have drummers and stuff and watching me being an ignorant new yorker thinking that new york is the center of the world at that point in my life i was like that's not realistic <laughs> they don't have that in la they they, i didn't know you know what i'm saying like i really didn't know but i remember that scene opened me up to culture in california mm -hmm. yes so tell me about working on that film well, and you know it's really interesting that you talk about that because i was under 
the mission. I was that was my mission to share the culture mm-hmm. with inside of Hollywood. Yes. You know, we did Northern Exposure. Okay. Which was like that's the number one show for a minute on CBS. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. It was crazy. I was like, how are they gonna put us in that? But I was like, yes, we will go and let's do it. We would do African dance in Alaska. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Like, really? I was like, yes. Cultural ambassador. Okay. Like I said, no matter where you come from, you are a, a drum. A drum, which comes from Africa, which means that you are an African. Yeah. Like, okay. Hey, I'm sorry. Everybody Everyone. African. Everyone is an African. The the person this is the, like a Skadank song. Okay. Everybody's Africa. <laughs> so the 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 character in the television show was having dreams of being in Africa doing African dance and drumming. But he was experiencing his brother's dreams mm. who was they were related in the, in this in the film. So mm. it was to me it was America, look. You can be white and do African dance and drumming too. Right. Because it is of you. Now, there is that separation that there is a difference there is a color difference but we are like i said the same you know so i would definitely try and make that a part in hollywood you know so we did the television shows different worlds we did the martins we did you know Anything that they asked for, we tried to give them what it is that we've all began with, no yes. matter who you are and where you come from. It's it's so truthful. That's what it is. It really lets you know. I mean, it's there is no no rule to it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. no rule to it. You can check it, but you got to be true to it. Yeah. You have to be true. It's the truth. The truth is the instance of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it and it and it shows. Yeah. It's it's evident. Um, let's talk about good brother Ben Harper okay. and the innocent criminals. Yes. Indeed. Uh you joined in ninety three? Yes, it's been yeah. Cafe Largo was that the first show? Wow. <laughs> it's a people's party. That's what we wow. do. <laughs> Yeah, Cafe Lago. I met Ben Harper crossing the street that night. You be crossing the street a lot. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. (laughs) That's so true. (laughs) (laughs) That's so (laughs) dead. Man, yeah, it was. uh, He came across the street, and I was crossing the street. We looked at each other. I said, You're Ben Harper. He, He goes, Yeah. He said, you're Leon Moment. I said, okay, yeah, okay, cool. We've never met each other before and never played with each other before. But at the end of the night, I was across the street uh, at the restaurant. He came over and said, "Uh, I want you to join my band. That's dope. And I was like, Stevie Wonder said the same thing to me (laughs) last week. So, you know, I just let you know. Just let you know. I I have a question. It's not on the script, but... uh... Why did Leon Mobley cross the street? <laughs> <laughs> to have a fantastic to career. To join another band. <laughs> 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 That's so good. That's <laughs> <laughs> We have a drummer here and I still had to... Right. There you go, Jess. Where's the intersection of comedy and drumming? Where's my cymbal? Ah, yeah. yeah. There you go. That was good. Thank you. I think I should probably start comedy now. <laughs> Um, I love the lyrics to um, Call It What It Is. Oh, yes. And I love when Ben step up like that on the social yes. justice tip. Yes. Um, he has often uh, spoken about being a black musician with a lot of white fans, something yes. that I personally yes. can relate to. Yes. Um, you've traveled the world with him. You've also played majority black audiences. You yes. know, um, you have the Lion Band. Yes. Um, what's your take on black musicians and playing for majority white audiences? audiences like this. You know, it's, it's so funny. I was, I watched De La Soul the other day. Oh, wow, that's my brothers. Think. Yeah, man. That's I was, my brothers. You know, that's what taught me how to tour. They And they were so real with it. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like so truthful with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It wasn't like this whole thing. Yeah. It was, 
this is what we do. This right. is who we are, and this is how we do what we do. Yep. And that's always been our universal thing that we do with Ben. Right. We sit there and we say, we are blessed to do what we do and we do what we do because we love what we do and we only know how to do what we do. So we enjoy doing what we do and we're being paid for doing what we do. Hey. And it's an amen that we are able to touch people's hearts and their lives by doing what we do. So let's do what we do and enjoy what we do. That's right. And Dayla you know has I mean? a good that time on that That needs to go on a t-shirt. Yeah. That yeah. whole thing, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, Especially the getting paid part. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part right there. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's real interesting, man. Sometimes I, I, I do things sometimes because I love what I do. Mm. I don't do it for the money. money. You know what I mean? For me, I've never chased dollar. Okay? But my, my job... I make a good dollar. That's right. know, but I've never been like, I got to get dollar. I need dollar. Right. I'm not doing this. For, I need dollar. No. I just did a, a Stephen Marley's new record. Mm -hmm. He didn't pay me a dime. Bro, it's okay. Right. It's that's, my, you know, it's cultural my, currency. That's me and Tyler just had a conversation about this. Yeah, we you had know? Master P on his show. He said, he said, people look at me as like, he's like, I always tell people, I don't chase money. He said, I'm looking for knowledge. He okay. said, I, I'm looking for knowledge. And that's, to, and that, now check out that word. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's two words. To know the ledge. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom always taught me, you have to know the ledge. You have to know the ledge. And, you know, you have to be able to respect and love self first before you get respect and love from anyone else. See, now I'm going to connect it all because one of my biggest records is called Knowledge of Self-Determination. Mm. And in parentheses, it says Kuji Chagalia because... Self-determination. I get it from the Nguzo Saba, just like you do. <laughs> <laughs> man, this is deep. Man, you are so deep. <laughs> no, man. No, my brother, my brother, my brother this morning, he's like, man, wait a minute. Tali Kuli? No, nah, man. That's an African brother right there. <laughs> Just check out his name. <laughs> I'm like, man, we, yeah, no, man. Does he live here? Does he live here? Because we want to do some djembe playing and get you in the scene and let you. I mean, bro, you have done what you have done, mm -hmm. which is laid down the rights oh, thank you, for brother. us to do what we do. Yes. And the world for recognition of it. I mean, Much respect and I can say the same thing you know? to you, ah. which is what makes it beautiful. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Man, to it's hear you name. say those things. I mean, I got a new song coming out. My new album is called To Know Thyself. Mm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To Know Thyself. You know, it's very important. Yeah, Steve, you want some water? some water? <laughs> I think she needs some water, too. <clears throat> I love this, too. Thank too. you, bro. Me, too. This is really it's positive. Yes. I'm really happy. Yes. All right. It's not cold, but it is. Ah, that's all good. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Bermucci making Steve. his debut on the People's Party. <laughs> you go, Bermucci. <laughs> <laughs> yes, brother Bermucci. Thank you. Steve. <laughs> yes, Bermucci! Steve gets a standing ovation for pouring water. And look, he's white, Tyler. That's white he's privilege white. right there. That's white privilege. That's white privilege. <laughs> <That's> white privilege. <laughs> Were you just born yesterday? <laughs> we love white people here at the People's Party. <laughs> All right, so while we were preparing, playing your music, my daughter absolutely loved your, your like, we... We played it for two days straight, wow. I swear to God. And now it's about to be a staple in my house because it calms her down, gets her excited. It gives all the feels. Well, thank so you. Afro Dance Grooves is a great <laughs> album. It's kind of like a workout tape. Yes, it is. Starts off with the warm up, ends yes. with a cool down. Yes. Can you take me through well, creating that? That that CD, I was uh, commissioned by the government of Japan. Mm. Oh. Yeah, uh, I have... a. Uh, a student who I met here at UCLA. <laughs> well, Japanese people are really serious about black oh, they, music. Oh, dude. <laughs> they are. They are. They're yeah. on it. And, Is the government commission you? Like, hey, okay. nigga, come play some drums. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pay you. <laughs> Is that how they sell it? That was it. That was, was it. That's how it went, man. Because before that, if I, got, if I was smoking any weed over there or anything like that. That's right. Hey, they get me for yeah, that. Yeah, we you know, know intimately on they, this side. They, they don't yeah. mess around. So, you know, they <laughs> called me up and asked me to, you know, I have a a student of mine who was at UCLA when I came to Los Angeles in 84, <laughs> sometime. Right. 
when I was teaching at UCLA, she started a dance company, an African dance, a West African dance company in Japan. Okay. So I go to Japan and I do lecture demonstrations and, and performances there. So uh, I was commissioned to do a CD for the exercise community. Mm-hmm. So each, oh, so it really was wow. for exercise. Yes, it is. Each okay. each rhythm has an increement in BPMs. BPMs. Like body pump. Yes. And it's a class, guys. Got it. So it's designed for them to use in their class. Wow. And it has, like she said, the warm up and the cool down at the yeah. end. And it's... It's a trip through African music. I have Balafon player on there. I yeah. play Balafon. And okay. I have Brother Darwin Johnson playing bass on a track. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a growth between the tr- traditional percussion music into such a meditative workout yeah. vibe. Yeah. Now, you said the BPMs increase. Yes. And... How many BPMs is the average soca song? Ah. Tiring. That's how many. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have a soca song on my C D, my new C D, which is it's a steel it's a steel piece. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a, it's a traditional pan song. And the tempo of it I think is at one thirty. One thirty. Yeah, one thirty. Um, that's a on the Afro dance grooves. That's the one that I like, the Soka one. Oh, okay. Um, and um, oh yeah, you yeah. saw the Soka one on yeah. there. Yeah, I like that segue, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, but he's a king. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I feel like that was inspired by you. Spent a lot of time in the Caribbean. Yes, I I grew up Trinidad. spending time in New York at the West Indian Carnival. Ah. Playing with Third World and Silver Stars. That's a the, very, very important part of oh, my life, the man, West Indian Day Parade. That is in such, Brooklyn. such It's the biggest enriching. one, I think. It's, it's like in New York, you don't have to be West Indian to grow up yeah, in that culture. It's the biggest Come one. On. I mean, that's the only place I've gotten shark. You know what I mean? Shock and bread. You know what I'm oh, saying? I, I, I thought he said shock. shock. I was like, I was oh, like yeah, that tracks. Why are you yeah. so excited? <laughs> I, I've been to the West Indian Rest Festival. You could get shot there. You, you gotta run faster. You can also get shark. Yeah, shock and bread. <laughs> shock no, and bread. That's real know, Trinidadian business. Yeah, I mean, you're from Boston. You know, yeah. so we say shock. <laughs> <laughs> shock. I went, I was, I did, a, I did Big Night Live in Boston uh, mm. last Friday with Soul Rebels. Oh, okay. And Jizza. And I was hungry, so I was like, let me go get, but I didn't want to go to legal seafoods. Yeah, Shout yeah, out, you know, yeah, but yeah, I wanted, yeah. I was like, let me get authentic. You ain't got crab legs like the, like the. I the- went to the <laughs> oldest restaurant in America. Oh. It's called the Union Oyster House. It's Union in, Oyster House. It's in Boston. House. It's been there since 1826. The wow. chairs are very uncomfortable. Of course. Wow. But the food is very good. <laughs> the wow. oysters are not from 1826. No, there's oysters okay. were fresh. Great. I'm going to have to go there. I'm going to have to check it out when I go. Yeah, it was very good. But I don't even know why we were talking about. Because you're hungry? Um, we were talking about Soka. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about the, the Caribbean. I was talking yes. about like Damian Marley. Yes. Um, yes. Shout out to Kanon. He's on that album. Yes, yes. Um, I feel like I'm, I had to have met you on tour. Did you go on Rock the Bells? Yes. I um, I feel like we had to have crossed paths yes, on Rock the definitely. Bells. Yes, I, definitely. I, I toured with... I've, I Okay, Damien Marley opened up for Ben Harper and Innocent Criminals. Okay. It's the greatest tour we've had yet, honestly. Okay, we're looking to do it again. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, I was burning one down. Oh, man. It was great. <laughs> burning more than one down. Come what on, does burning man? one down mean for those of us who don't know? That's the name of Ben Harper's song. Yeah. Yeah. But that's also what Damien Marley and Ben Harper, I could picture them doing that on a tour. <laughs> so we spent a lot of time with the Marleys. My mother used to make jewelry for Bob. Okay. Wow. You know, we were actually in the same performance at Boston University. So we've... I've had connection with the Marley Marley's. family yeah. for a long time, not even really knowing, knowing it. Mm-hmm. Ah. But, you know, their, their, their babysitter lived at our house. Wow. Her and my mother were good friends. Ah. That's how my mother was able to get jewelry to Bob during mm-hmm. the day. So when we were on tour in New York mm-hmm. playing at Central Park, she was there and we were all together. We was like, we all know each other. So we were like, we're, we're really it's family. Connected. We're, we're, we're connected. So we ended up, you know, Ben decided, he's like, okay, let me, let me 
do some other things with some different artists. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it's great. You know, grow, bro, grow. So we took a break and I ended up touring and recording with Damien mm-hmm. on his last album. And we did Distant Relatives with Nas. And I ended up recording with Mick Jagger and Joss Stone. I did Joss Stone's album later. Mm. I did Mick Jagger's album and Dave Stewart's album. So, you know, being with them, I was able to, you know, touch different right. artists and do different things. But it was a chance for us to spend time and live with each other. So now, you know, I mean, I, I, I wear this on my wrist. Yes. It's the only thing that I wear. This and my, my ring to my wife because I can't play with it on my finger. So I wear it here. But this is my Bob Marley that I got at the studio. Yes. And that's, that's, that's how we, you know, I talk to them on their birthdays and I call Steven, I call Ziggy, I call Damien, yeah. I call Julian, I did Julian's album. You know, it's, so it's, it's like family. You know, we're family. That's beautiful. You know, it's shout really out to good. the Marley family. Yeah, the Marley and family. shout out to your mother because she just had you in all the right places. <laughs> yeah, my, my yeah. mom is, is, is a woman of the world. She, she you know, she, she, she she was a Muslim. Her name is Fatima. Mm. She, you know, not, we were black Muslim, but we are also orthodox Muslim oh. when we went to the mosque, oh. you know, and we didn't wear suits, you know, we wore, you know, traditional clothing. Right. First, we were at a, at, a, at a church. We were Christians at first, you know. So then she went into... Damn, you really black. Oh, mm-hmm. man. She's black, black. <laughs> Mom, 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 mom did it, took us all. You know, she, she took us into... That's like a Nam black Yo, American experience. Yeah, mm-hmm. Nam Yo Renge Kyo. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we studied that. You know, yeah. I was mm-hmm. I was eating tofu back in the 60s, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We were East-West food. Right, eat to live. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I was, we were at the first Air One. The first right. store, the Air One store. Right. We were there. That's when they had health food stands. Come on, health food stands. Stands, bro. <laughs> Come on, it was not like there was no Whole Foods. No, is no. you go to Whole Foods stand no, no, no. and you okay. go there and be like, oh, it's not there no more. Damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's what you know. That's yeah. that's that's who she was, and she, you know, she was a cultural. She's a cultural lady. She knew the kings. Knew. Mm. I mean, we met the King family. I remember meeting, you know. Dexter and, 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 and they had roots. Of, they had the King family had roots yeah. in Boston as well, because yes. like, he was at BU. Yes, we. You know, I, I worked with the, her, her there. Mm. You know, so even even here we worked at uh, 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 Agape Church together. Wow, you know, she came there and we did the thing because it's I, a very big church out here. <laughs> yeah, I, I played with their. I recorded with them and did their thing over there with them. Mm. Reverend Michael, he he used to come to my drum day giveaway. I give away. Ten, twenty thousand dollars worth of drums to the community, you know. Just you would get in by just bringing, you know, a non-perishable food item that I would give to battered women's homes or, or children, you know, battered children. I'd give them all the food and all the clothing that people would bring to get into the show, and then they would get a ticket. And we would pick a number, and they would get a drum. Food for drum sounds brilliant. You know, wow, so yeah, yeah. That's, that's that that was it. That's the yeah. drum day giveaway. That's so dope. I and the amount of that. kids that stayed off the street because they were at home playing their drum. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I know I that. Don't want to work. I know the drum saved my life. <laughs> yes. I mean, because there are so many potholes and so many loopholes out here that are set out here for people of color to fall into that's because right. they don't want you to go ahead in the world and be, you know, something that's touching people in the world and, and doing things in the world. So a lot of us had fallen into that road, but I know that the drum kept me focused in what it is that I should be doing and how it touches people and what it does for our people as a cultural aspect of who we are and where we come yeah. from so that we know and live that and that be our focus in our life and not the tricks that they have for us and the press snatching and the drugs that they have mm-hmm. for us and that's and that and all those things that are there that we think that we need to do to get ahead in this world. No, we all can learn. We all can read. We all can write. 
right. We all know truth. We all know right. We all know what's wrong. So we not to know what we have to do to do what's right. We got to know what we have to do to do what's right. You know, right. we all have the same feelings. That's right. You know what I mean? If I, if I talk about you, if I cut you, you're going to be the same color as me. Mm-hmm. If I talk about you and hurt you, you're going to feel the same way as me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we are the same. Yes, you indeed. know what I mean? And let's have the respect and the time for that. You know, because it's, it's, it's like this. In life, there are the ups and there's downs. Mm-hmm. There's the goods and there's the bads. You can't have good without bad. That's you true. can't have peace without That's having true. a war. That's you true. Know yin mean? and yang. Yeah, it's yin and yang. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's about balance. So it's about the choices that we make in life, the things that we do to keep on going because we're going to live and everybody is going to do something in the world that is going to be contributing to our lives, whether you think so or not. Yes, indeed. You know what I mean? But what you have said is going to touch someone in some way, somehow. It's happening Someone right just now. Said, Come on. It's happening on. right now. Deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> um, you keep bringing it back to Africa. Yes, indeed. And, and very intentionally and purposely. And the difference I, I find historically in the intention behind African art and other art, uh, largely European art, is, in my opinion is that African art is always efficient and practical. It's, you know, you know, you're talking about when you go to a museum, you know, they they rob graves and took from people cultures. But okay. what what do you see as African art, right? You see bowls, plates, spoons, things that people need to eat and live. Um, whereas European art, the, the, the paintings and Renaissance is like, you know, I'm going to paint a, a flower or a tree. And it's like, it's really beautiful, right? right? But the focus, the, the purpose of it is, is, it's just different. I won't, I won't say one is better or worse. It's well, just see, different. Art is 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 made from the environment. Yeah. What is there? Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So <laughs> now, so now we had Salema um, Masekela, who's Hugh Masekela's mm-hmm. yes. son, no, on the show, no. and Hugh Masekela is one of the most important African Love. artists in the world and it's because he kept bringing it back yes. to Africa and his That's art right. was very practical. It wasn't just about singing a happy song. No. It's about, no, I have to tell you, like, right. like Fela, like Bob Marley, Vasca I have to, the, like Vasca Nina Simone. Vasca Gama, the sailor man. That's how I learned it from Hugh Masekela. Yeah. Bro, come on, this is a, a African culture. Right, so when Mandela gets out after 30 years, yes. You and Hugh Masekela and Letta uh, yes. uh, and Bulu yeah. and uh, a bunch of other people. Kite these kids. you got you yes. went to South Africa with Hugh Masekela and them, yes. and they had been exiled. They hadn't been in South Africa since then. That's right. So, sh- can you share that experience with us? That was you're talking about enriching. That was a experience because. It was an experience of enrichment, an experience of life that will always be because there was such a world view on it. It was a world view, the treatment of the oppression of the people there. I remember walking the streets and we couldn't go to town that night because it was too late, sun had gone down, we had to stay over here. I'm like, what? You can't go home? So there was an issue of righteousness there too. You know, of there's been wrong to these people, been wrongdoing to these people. It's time to be right. It's time for things to come and and give them what they need. So we had F and B Stadium, control of television. People were like amazed that we were able to do and be seen and public Mm -hmm. on such a level at that time because it had never been. Yeah. And these people had been banned from this country for 26 years. 20, you know, they left, they defected with the company when they were doing a play, King Mm -hmm. Kong. King Kong, right. And they never went back to this was their first time home. Yeah. So it was such an enriching, a truthful, righteous scene that the people of South Africa, because when you land, you, they, you see 
everyone lives in a ten metal house. Shell, right. You know, it's just there's nothing there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're talking about the townships. Yeah, the townships. It's just yeah. you know really bad. So it was just a chance for us to be in the city, to walk down the street, to without the police or anything. You know, this was a celebration of being an African, being. Uh, you know, Zulu being uh, 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 South African, yeah. being able to have your culture be celebrated and acknowledged. And I mean, it just opened, it opened up so much. You know, I started working with other artists, Brenda Fossey and Sakili and all these different mm-hmm. bands. And it was a chance because we were able to record. We were able to perform in city where we weren't able to, to do before. Yeah. So it was it was a freedom fight. It was a chance at the fight that we're free. Yes. This is it. Yes. You know? We were cha, 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 cha. You know, it was beautiful, man. I can't imagine that. I can't. I've been to South Africa many times, one of my favorite places. Um, you know, I remember when Mandela, he came to New York shortly after that. Mm-hmm. And I remember, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't, I tried, I was trying to see him at Yankee Stadium, did not get to go. Um, but yeah, it's just it's such an important, that movement, that anti-apartheid movement in South Africa was such a, an important example for marginalized people. Yes. Um, yes. So how do you feel that we can keep the art of West African drumming alive? And where are some places that there's West African rhythms, like in hip hop, that we may not think? Hmm. It's so evident in all the music, really. A lot of us just don't understand the placement of it, how it really works in there. There is not a rap song, there is not a hip hop song, there is not a pop song that djembes or traditional West African or African drums of East Africa, South Africa, some kind of African rhythm can go inside of this music. Now, do we all understand that we are doing this type of music? No. You know, so we don't really understand how it does that. But the music is first... Like we said, there are so many Europeans that are starting to use it now. Mm -hmm. So that's like, oh, oh, this that's the thing now. Okay, so now everybody's starting to. I remember a bunch of Paul Simon Gracelands going on. (laughs) Okay, I I remember, I remember, I remember. I'm sorry, I I love Graceland. I didn't mean to shout at Paul Simon. No, it's it's the truth. (laughs) I mean, there was a. I can't remember the name of the band, but it was a bunch of white people that won Best Reggae Album of the Year at the Grammys. Uh, Okay. Come on. Uh, matter of fact, I'm glad you said that because what I'm not really there's a there's a reggae scene in South Ca- South California, Southern mm-hmm. California, mm-hmm. and I'm not a part of it. Right? There's some like jam band reggae scene yeah. that I'm hearing, and uh, if the people blonde, in the room can the chime in, that there's blonde. there's a there's a, a problem where there's way too many white reggae bands to the point where black reggae bands can't even get a good look in the scene mm. is this a is this a true thing it is a true thing it's crazy it is it is a true thing because one plus the trustafarians <laughs> <laughs> are you there god is me Raj Trent that's my shit <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't mean to cut you off please <laughs> no 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 I mean we're looking at society we're mm-hmm. looking at you know the issue of the privileges that are happening Okay, I've worked with some of those bands. Revolution, I've recorded with them. They're all white. Soldier, that's the name. So, Soldier, I work with Soldier. What it is for me is, it's a recognition of the culture of it. You know, understanding where it comes from. Who's in charge of it now? who's doing what they're doing with it now are not these people Mm -hmm. that have this cultural vibe. Okay? Mm -hmm. Seriously. Even the lyrics that Revolution sings, they're they're, they're of, you know, some oppression. And maybe they haven't done that, you know, and they're, 
utilizing the living situation of people who have that and touching them. But the song still has a message in it. Okay. Now, whether we know who is giving the message, the message is there. To support and go into that, it's another thing. It's not like I wear their clothing, I wear their drum, you know, their their instruments and use their thing and do their thing and do their thing and do their thing. That's not what I'm about. Mm-hmm. I am not saying that soldier is the man and revolution is the man and rah, rah, rah. When I was in the session with revolution, the producer was like, uh, let me talk to you for a minute. Because I'm talking to them about being white playing this music. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because it's the truth Mm -hmm. that I'm going to deal with. Mm -hmm. When when somebody like Burning Spear would see me and say, Brother Leon. When Toots, the brother just passed away, would say, Brother Leon Mm -hmm. knows my name. That's it. Mm -hmm. When Tabby of Mighty Diamonds, Brother Mm -hmm. Leon. Yes, that's it. Because this is what we do. This is who we are. And guess what? There are many that want to be like us. Mm. And there's room for them. I don't know these bands' music or they politics, so I can't speak on whether or not they are authentic or not. I would like to believe that there are obviously ones that are and are obviously ones that aren't. But I got to say, we made fun of Steve for having white privilege. But the, the idea, like, you have to live in a pretty white and a pretty privileged place to to not find one black person to be in your reggae band. Okay. <laughs> like where do you okay. live? Okay. In the mountains? You know, come on. Can he get the can he I, set I up just, the speakers uh, or something? Like that? It sucks because it's like I don't want to be we, we can't I don't think black people can be considered racist, but I don't want to still separate people, but it's still like it should be some rules like why the hell is white <laughs> niggas winning a reggae album when Spice who you have who's been busting her ass in Jamaica, it's now Dave, Dave Chappelle said, and the award for nigger of the year goes to Eminem. Exactly. Ah. <laughs> exactly. Crazy. And it's just like for a, a, a music group that's still not mainstream, because reggae is not mainstream. The best, re- shout out to Spice. I love Spice mm-hmm. and she's not included, but a lot of the best reggae songs are you're not going to hear in public ever. But how the hell, like who is on this committee that you feel that, oh. So let me ask this. Let me ask this. For the, for the older people in the room. Which does not include me. <laughs> we'll know what by your answer to this question. <laughs> Were you mad when George Michael won Best R&B Song for Careless Whispers? Mm. Oh, he won, he yeah, won Best is. R&B, yeah. Grammy. Yeah. Careless Whispers is a great song. Macklemore, I was on tour with Macklemore when yeah. he won Best Rap Oscar. Yeah, best rap. And Macklemore I, was very upset. I was and he shocked. And he called Kendrick Lamar. And we talked about this on the show. He texts Kendrick Lamar. Try, he tried his best to give Kendrick Lamar that award that year. But yeah. he couldn't. Because no. Macklemore is a white guy who does the work to be uh, culturally sensitive. And to, to he understands that he, he sees himself as a guest in the culture. And so he approaches it that way. Like he approaches it very cautiously, very graciously. I, I, don't, I wasn't in the music business when... when George Michael won that award, but I do remember that as a black person listening to BLS and Kiss, yeah. they used to play that record a lot. Huh, sure. So did it deserve that award? Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know who does the things, but I also want to say last thing about the whole reggae album is that Spice, because there were people obviously. You like Spice. I, I mean, I. She's, she's rapping for Spice. Heavy. Well, the thing <laughs> is that because her fans were like, what the fuck? What is this? Uh-huh. Da, 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 da. And she was just like, for a person that's coming from homeless to being nominated for the Grammys, mm-hmm. I just want to say thank you. Like, you know, she didn't like do the rah rah thing. She like kind of still gave that other people their props, but I'm not. Hmm. I, I, I tell you, I'll be honest with you. It is upsetting. It's upsetting as to be of that that time period, that work doing the laying down the stuff and not having the recognition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Bob Marley, where, where, where is the recognition for him? Mm-hmm. I mean, really, in terms of reggae, even of reggae. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what it is that we've done in the music world, 
how rap is, you know, right. I'm telling you, like the McEwen and all these other people, they went t- until they heard, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So we have a substance of originals originating, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of people following. It's just like back in the day, Pat Boone had to sing black songs. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So those songs didn't become hits in the world until he did it. That's right. But it was done by some brothers and stuff mm-hmm. first. So when that idealism is in operation, because the wheel ain't been invent- reinvented. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's Look the at John B. Thing. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm shout saying. out to John B. John B. Didn't nobody know he was white. No, we John B. Was John B. He's like the official pass getter. He just looks light skinned. He's light skinned. It's like okay, you like I, I remember he, when I he, found out he, he was Puerto white. Rican. And what's the woman's name? <laughs> Tina. Nah. Tina Marie. That's white. Tina Marie yeah, is definitely Tina white. Right. Okay, so John. we gonna name all the cool white people. Is that what we're gonna I'm do? Not, that, that, okay. that show? I don't know. John, anymore. John, I'm just John. Kidding, Ramucci. Okay, <laughs> John was cool. John was a cool student. He was my student. At, John B. John yes, B. Yes. Oh wow! Look I, at this. I, I well, definitely point. shout him yeah. out then. See, I, I taught. I taught at the uh, high school performing arts here mm-hmm. in Los Angeles, and he mm-hmm. was a student there. Oh. At the time period, he was white. Yeah. <laughs> How white was he? he, he How white was he? He, 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 he was white that he knew he was white, mm-hmm. that he had to be, you know, he had to be, be white. Mm-hmm. And then later on in later scenes, you can he, like, he start chilling and start a little swag. Yeah, start the swag in a little yeah. bit, which is all, it's all cool. Right. Because your sound mm-hmm. is, where is it coming from? Mm-hmm. But he understood and respected and showed that. Whereas a lot of sometimes these reggae bands that you're talking about, they're not. Right. Okay, I live in Hawaii now. Okay. Hawaii, Hawaii mm-hmm. has a scene. Mm-hmm. Jawaiian music, they call it. I've heard about this. Okay, I've worked with the top artists there. Mm-hmm. Kimmy A's, the Jay Boogs, you know, uh, uh, Fiji. I mean, all the people, I've worked with them. Mm-hmm. They see me not as... The white reggae artists see me, although they're not black reggae artists. Right. Okay? There's an indigenous thing going on. Anna Haya has got blonde hair, but she loves me. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 she understands how the queen got taken to slavery mm-hmm. and how the people had to fight for their rights and how they don't have the land and how they have these a different going on. cultural yeah. experience. A different cultural experience. That relates experience. more with yours. Right. It relates more. Yeah. That's exactly right. But the Europeans who haven't had that experience, who grew up in Colorado, you know mm-hmm. I mean, on, on a, on a cl- on farm. You suits. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mad because I have to work at the blood clock Cold Stone Creamery. <laughs> Oh, right. Right. That was the first job that didn't hire me. Shout out, Cold Stone. My blood clot parents are bald heads. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's next for Leon Mobley? <laughs> well, right now I'm working on two albums. Mm-hmm. Uh, my work that I've put out in the years past have just been, you know, me putting them out. Mm-hmm. I would like to get a deal on this one. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, in all honesty. I, uh, I've called on a lot of my friends. I have members from uh, different bands that are working with me. I have Sweet Honey and the Rock. Oh, my God. I have... <laughs> They don't know about Sweet Honey and the Rock. Now that, was, that was not an old man, oh my God, I ain't seen one. <laughs> oh, man, Toshi you know. Reagan. Yeah. Man. I mean, I got, you know... I got some members of Fishbone up in there. Oh, so you're doing like, this is, like yeah. I said, you really black. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I got some Ziggy's people up in okay. there. I have uh, Kamasi Washington. Oh, this who, is amazing. Who I've been doing uh, work with lately. I, I did just did a spoken, smoking grooves with him a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, nice, mm-hmm. nice, Was nice. he at the, the oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm being slow. I literally said we just saw him while you were saying he was at Smoking Grooves, and I was about to ask, wasn't he was at, he at smoking, smoking Grooves? He was. <laughs> he was at Smoking Grooves. Yes, you were standing right next to him. I, yes, I that was. was you. That's why I was like, that was you. That was definitely you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I recorded his first album, and 
you know, it's, we've been so I I I, I kind of called on some friends of mine. I got got to get somebody, by with a little help from your friends. Yeah, Just to get by. I got I got Ben Harper on mm-hmm. there. I got uh, some guys from Magic, that white reggae band out okay. of Canada. <laughs> yeah, shout out to all the speak white reggae the devil. out there. <laughs> <laughs> you said speak. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, the I'm other- sure Magic is fantastic. I haven't heard their music. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you got Talib Kweli on it. <laughs> there we go. All right, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There and if we need, go. If you need, if you, need, if you, you if put you, me in a song with Magic. <laughs> listen, if you need any comedy over your West Magic, African calm beats, down. I was just joking. Definitely, because I got a piece on there about sisters. You know? Well, I don't think that I'll find the cleanest of my of my jokes to, for that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Jokes with drumming. as I was sitting here, I was thinking, no one better not freaking take it either. Yeah. Well, listen, the People's Party is honored and blessed to have you. Thank, Thank you for coming down, Leon Mobley. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. <laughs>